anger here in New York City over police officers firing 50 rounds into a car in Queens. An unarmed man in the early hours of Friday morning was the victim of what appears to be aggressive show of force by police. The man, identified as Sean Bell, was celebrating his bachelor party with friends in a Queens lounge. Talking about Sean, um, for me, it's like one of my favorite things because what people know is just the whole tragedy of how his life ended, but um, not too many know who he really was. He was, he was that guy who um, really cared about family, cared about um, his friends. Um, he was a mama's boy. And um, my daughter, she, my oldest daughter, Jada, she was daddy's little girl. We were in high school when we met. I was 16 and he was 17. Sean was shy, he was so shy. Um, he wasn't, you know, that guy that wanted all the attention, you know, everyone looking at him. He was very humble. Uh, Sean had played baseball since he was a young boy. You know, his, his father was really proud. The hood used to call him S-Rod. Like, when we used to play, his name was S-Rod. Like, he, this, this is what they used to call him, for real. He had all time of potential, like. I honestly think that kid could have played professional baseball. He was that good. You know, it was like from, from grade school all the way through. And he wanted to get married. He wanted to take care of his daughters. He wanted to be a man and take that obligation and hold it tight. His mother and father, like, they had a marriage that was you know what I'm saying, a long marriage so it's like this is what he wanted to do this is what he was taught by his father um, my mom had planned for me to have a bridal shower so it was um, my friends from the neighborhood my siblings my grandma was there um, and we they we, we exchanged gifts had wine listened to music laughed um, I had an appointment to get my hair done the next day so it was I was sort of half ready, but <laughs> you know, the hair is everything. So um, he had went to, he had went out with my brother-in-law and um, maybe 10 other of his friends that were just from the neighborhood. And um, some of them knew about this small, you know, little club that was in the area. And um, I remember speaking to him at maybe about seven, six or 7 p.m. that evening. And uh, you know, he said, "Oh, we're just gonna go over to Kalua," and I'm like, "What's Kalua?" He's like, "We're going to this, you know, some spot." You know, um, one of his friends knew of it. And so I said, "Okay, you know, have fun." You know, I guess I'll speak to you a little bit later. We was at the bachelor party, and we was having a good time. Like he was happy. I seen it. I know. I, I know him. I, I know him, and I know. I seen it in his face that he was happy. Like I like, oh, you're really happy. You're really, you're really ready to do this. Like he was really. And his father was there. Two of his uncles was there. We had a good time. When I came out the bar, S was in an argument with a, a dude in a, a black expedition. I'm saying, yo, listen, that's like, you get married tomorrow, listen. It was diffused completely. It was diffused to the point where he got in his truck and he drove up the block. When he drove up the block, we walked up the block to get to go to our car, not knowing the whole time the police was basically stalking us. Is Nora, is, uh, is Nora is the, police, the first police that first shot. When he comes up the sidewalk with his gun drawn, so we try to, you know what I'm saying, pull a car out so we can try to drive off. Now, at that point, he started shooting. His first shot hit me in my chest. Trent Benefield, he gets hit in his leg in the back seat. Him being an athlete saved my life. Him being an athlete popping over the door and start running, they stopped shooting in the car. I can't move my body, nothing. All I can move is my arms. I can't move at all. I'm in between. It's the steering wheel, it's me, and I'm on top of S. That's the, this is the position that we ended up in. Sometime during the night, my mom woke me up and she said, that something had happened to Sean because my brother-in-law had called. He said, listen, something happened. You guys need to get to the hospital. 
and he hung up. So being from Queens, we know there's like only two major hospitals in the area, Jamaica Hospital or uh, Mary Immaculate. My mom called Jamaica Hospital and they said to just gather the family and come. They didn't say what. It felt like time was just moving so slow. None of us knew what was going on. And we were kind of like pacing back and forth in the waiting area of the emergency room. A few moments later, she came in and she explained to us what happened. She said um, he was shot by police officers and um, he passed away. Five police officers fired 50 rounds into a car last weekend, killing one man and wounding two others. The victims were black and unarmed. It's bad out here, man. It's bad out here. 50 shots. One police shot 31 times. Like, what y'all shooting at? Y'all ain't no tanks out here? <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no tanks out here? What are y'all shooting at? The way that it was being told was that, you know, Sean tried to run over a police officer and he was shot. No, Sean was approached by a 28-year-old black man who was wearing a fitted cap, a bubble, a goose down vest, Air Max, 95s, baggy jeans, an undercover cop who was a part of the vice squad. I swear, if he had a badge, we'd have put our hands on the dashboard because we don't put our hands on the dashboard because we've been through this so many times that we know and we got we don't have nothing we don't have no drugs we don't have no guns we have nothing shots is from everywhere it's coming from everywhere and they let these people go home <laughs> they let these people go home after they did that the officers three of them went on trial out of the five they were indicted um, through the Queens um, District Attorney and they were indicted on eight different charges ranging from reckless endangerment to manslaughter. Ultimately, after two months, they were acquitted of all charges. A judge found the three police detectives charged in the case not guilty on all counts. Michael Oliver and Gascard Isnora both faced manslaughter charges, assault and reckless endangerment. Detective Mark Cooper was accused of reckless endangerment. When we received the acquittal that day in court, it, it really felt like they had killed Sean all over again. You know, immediately it, it was the term justice. That was what we were looking for. That was the next thing. We were looking for justice. And what was justice to us? Justice was the killers being held accountable. Them going to jail, um, that would have been justice. I don't believe that all the police are bad because they're not. Like, I got a couple of family members that's in the department. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got a, uh, a, a cousin that actually works in one police plaza. Like, I got a couple of family members. But my thing is this black, Puerto Rican, white, whatever you put it, if you sit back and watch it, then you just as bad as the, <laughs> you just as bad as him. If you sit back and watch it and don't say nothing about it. You just as bad. Scores of people gathered outside the courthouse with heavy security by police. There was one angry scuffle outside, but for the most part, they stuck to using their words to show their outrage. The Reverend Al Sharpton joined the Bell family at the Long Island Cemetery where Sean Bell was buried. We just fought and fought and fought to try and get policies changed and, and laws changed. The detective who, was, who started the fire, he was a part of the vice squad. And if anyone knows um, as a member of the vice squad, you're allowed to drink or even do drugs just to blend in with the crowd. If that's what's taking place in the club, you have to blend in. Um, so bartenders had testified at the trial that they remember serving that, um, that detective who fired the initial shot, who followed Sean a block and a half. They remember serving him um, drinks. Um, so after you know, fighting hard. We actually had a policy change that um, after any police shooting, that officers would be um, given a breathalyzer exam. I feel like with S, more than me, like I, I understand what happened to me. I, like I, 
God was with me. I, I got shot 16 times and I'm sitting here to talk to you about it. But it, they didn't show him no respect. They didn't show him no respect and he deserved that. And they didn't, they didn't, they brushed him off like it was, you mean, you basically mean nothing. This is, this is in me the way I feel. What does his mother feel like? What does his father feel like? His sister? What do they feel like? His wife, like what do they feel like? His daughters was young. They ain't never gonna see their father again. Despite all of the obstacles we have faced, you know, my daughters have dealt with something that um, many adults haven't even faced, you know. Um, right now, when there is a, a police-involved shooting or, or, or even a, a huge civil rights movement like Trayvon Martin, her dad's name is brought to the forefront again. So we constantly, consistently have to have a conversation over and over and over again. Because social media, with social media, information is passed instantly, you know. Sometimes her friends will tag her in a post and it's not, you know, something that she's extremely proud of. You know, it makes her very sad. Our neighborhood is going to be Sean Bell for life. They will always go the extra mile for anything that has his name tied to it. Now, mind you, for 10 years now, Sean Bell All-Stars has been the first street ball dynasty ever. You know, in Rucker Park, West Fork, Dykeman, we done won, won all the tournaments that's going to keep his name going forever. His name is legendary. He's going to live on forever. We're not going to stop. Like, just because we didn't get justice for Sean Bell, that don't mean I'm not going to go out and fight for uh, Alton Sterling. We can look in the face of despair and we gonna keep going. It doesn't matter that everything is stacked against us and everything is unfair. It doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving up. Like I'm not giving up. We we still in a fight. We still in a fight, man. It took a very long time for me to accept what had happened. And the way that I was able to move on was by attending rallies, attending marches, and doing anything and everything possible to make people know who Sean was. Once the media fades away, and, and once that hashtag is, is no longer right in your face, to remember that we have rights. You know, we deserve to be able to go to a bachelor party and make it home safe.